Hello and welcome back to Wrench Therapy. Today we're going to do the disassembly, inspection, and reassembly of a drum brake. This particular drum brake happens to be off of a 2002 Accord. Uh, don't see too many of these anymore, but we happen to have one, so this is what we're going to use today. Uh, quick run through on the tools that we're going to use. Uh, we will need a selection of pliers, okay, a special spring hold down tool, selection of adjuster tools, flashlight, large socket for our axle, uh, socket here to get the drum off, our shoe adjusting tool, and of course, safety glasses. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing would be to take the, uh, take our drum off, is you're gonna have to work this drum off. Now, Honda has given us bolt holes where we can screw a bolt in and grab hold of the drum, okay? Um, doesn't matter what length you use, just has to be uh, the correct size. For a Honda, it is eight by one, two, five, and you just spin them in a little bit on each side until the drum comes free. Once the drum comes free, you slide it off. Like I said, that's not always gonna be that easy. Sometimes you're going to have to uh, turn the adjuster back. The adjuster is right inside here. There is a hole in the back and you can come through with your adjuster tool and you can de-adjust. All right, and you have to use the appropriate tool. This one, we're already there, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this uh, cap here. Now, the reason I'm doing this, you can certainly do the drum brakes without taking the hub off. But on a Honda, as you can see, this hub covers most of the hardware. It is a whole lot easier if you take this off. Not every car you're gonna be able to do this. Uh, if I was doing this on my uh, Chevy pickup truck, this guy's gonna be there, there's nothing I can do. Now, the drum brakes are a lot bigger and the hardware is a lot more exposed, so it's not as big a deal. Uh, if you did this on something like a Civic, you can't get to anything without taking this out of the way. So, I'm just gonna spin this guy off. Obviously, if this was the first time this had ever been done, that would be a whole lot tighter. All right, and just make sure you pull this guy straight off. If you pull it at an angle, it's gonna jam up. Uh, just information here. This is the tone wheel for our ABS. The sensor is right there. It just counts the teeth as the wheel spinning, tells us the wheel speed, and that goes to the ABS. It used for traction control, a lot of different things. All right, so we put the hub out of the way. Here we are with the drum brake, with the hardware. So, wheel cylinder on the top. This cable down here is for our parking brake. It attaches to this arm that applies the parking brake. We have the adjuster spreader rod here. There's the adjuster. This is the automatic part of the adjuster with this spring. When the shoes are applied, at when we reach a certain wear point, it will take another click on this and adjust the length of this rod. That is the stationary length of this rod that gets adjusted, which moves the shoes out when they're at rest. Obviously, when we're doing this, when we're using the hydraulics, we're gonna go farther. This is just where we put a static adjustment on the shoes themselves. Of course, here's the shoes. Here's the hold downs for that. And then we have a spring, hold down spring here, and the spring across the adjuster there. All right, the order that you do this in, it's pretty much up to you. You can do it a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm gonna show you my preferred way, and I found it to be easier to do it this way. So, I pulled the bottom shoe out. Okay, and once I've got that out, you can see 
that spring comes right off okay no tools necessary all right next step I'm going to take the hold downs here uh, actually I'm probably gonna pull this out for the moment all right so when we're pulling these springs notice I'm using regular pliers I am NOT using you can use needle nose if you want do not use cutoff pliers you will cut this spring if you use pear dykes this cutting part and grab it here yeah it'll grab easy but you're going to cut through this or you're going to nick it and if you nick it it's going to make this weaker and we don't want to do that so make sure you're grabbing it with the flat part of the pliers uh, squeeze and then I use my thumb to push and pull when I'm holding with this hand okay and now we can take our adjuster out of the way or not you know, just leave it in there for now it's not gonna hurt anything okay so here is the hold down spring tool for a Honda it has a little wedge that floats you've got a notch in the center grabs our hold down nail here I just line it up I hold it from the back side so that the center won't get pushed backwards and then I just rotate 90 degrees yeah. there we go okay now this guy will come all the way out I'm going to show you a little bit closer what this looks like you got a slot there you got the wedge location for this this guy just comes straight through and turns and sits at an angle that's all we're doing so we're just turning that 90 degrees and pulling it off Okay, grab this one. And there we go. Number two, out of the way. Put this guy out of the way. Now, this one is ready to come off, and it's going to come off pretty easy at this point. Okay, uh, caution when you're pulling this apart, don't let the pistons go too far out one way or another okay you notice how that just fell right off okay um, we don't want to push too far because if you push too far you're just going to pop this guy right out like that and that's bad because now we've introduced air into the wheel cylinder we're gonna to have to bleed the brakes so we don't want that to happen we want that guy to stay in there now granted this this one here uh, we don't have any fluid in it because this is no longer connected to the car But there's a spring inside here that keeps pressure outwards We just want the spring pressure to do thing We don't want to push this too far and that happens when we're putting the shoes in and we're trying to pull the This big spring on we tend to push too hard one way and when we do you can see how it's moving this guy out now these guys are nice and pliable so they're staying connected unless you force it, but that's just something to watch out for. We don't want to pop that piston out, okay? All right, so here we are. Here's our adjuster. And if you notice, this guy is not turned all the way in. So I'm gonna grab this while I'm here and turn that in. We wanna make the rod as short as possible because the shorter the rod is, the easier it is to get the spring on okay see how that's nice and short now that's bottomed all the way out so now it's it's a really simple matter to um, get our spring out we can just separate this out like so and there we go so that's our spring on our adjuster shoe shoe okay now uh, sometimes your shoes will be identical in this case they are with the exception of this one pin the notches the holes they're all the same but you have to have that pin because that pin is where your uh, your automatic adjuster is hitting okay all right so this guy uh, we'll get back to this one in a minute because I'm going to show you how to lubricate that. Okay, so down at the bottom, again, if this was in a car, this would be nice and tight. This is our parking brake cable. Because it's not in the car, I can pull it out easily. All right, so that's all you've got. That notch right there with this guy just lays in 
like that. But normally your spring is going to be right here. So what you have to do to get this guy apart is grab this spring, pull back to get yourself a little bit of slack, and then you can pop it out like that. So you have to pull this spring back to get that connected and disconnected, okay? All right, right here. Some of your shoes, replacement shoes, will come with this arm, some will not. This arm is for our parking brake. Notice how we've got notches on here. That notch sits in here, okay? Get this correct here. All right, our spring's in place. Now the rod's in place. So if you watch real closely, when I pull, see how that moves? That rod. That's how we operate our parking brake. Okay, just like that. So, if you notice, they're two different depths. The shoe is one part, the arm is different. And there we have two different depths on this end of the... Uh, adjuster rod. Make sure you get it in the right place. Okay, you have to go with the deep part for the back, the shallow for the front, just like that. If you do it the other way, it's not going to sit properly. It would sit up and you wouldn't have it sitting on the shoe. So keep make sure you do that. All right, if you have to replace this, we just spread this horseshoe clip and this whole arm comes right off the back side. And then we put it back on. There is a special tool for this. Uh, if you really need it, it just helps kind of spread that horseshoe. But you can do this with a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, something like that. Works just fine. All right. So now we're inside just the backing plate. So I'm going to show you a few things in here. Right there, you can see this hole. That is where we're going to come through with our adjusting tool. Okay. Now this probably is going to take that one and you can see it's it's kind of tight in there it's kind of tight uh honda didn't leave us a whole lot of room they gave us a port to go through but truthfully it's kind of challenging to get in there uh that's why usually if i can i just take it take the drum off and adjust it back down once i got the drum off out here you see six flat ovals pads okay those guys are where this section of the shoe sits okay so we're sitting here like this and it rides back and forth as it applies it rides on these pads and you can actually see some wear on that one pad we need to lubricate these sections okay they have to be lubricated or else you will get a creaking every time you apply the brakes. We also want to lubricate down here where the shoe hits on this post. We're going to put a little lube up here and a little lube in there. Basically any place that we have uh, metal to metal contact. So, to use the lube, we're going to use our, um, in this case I've got uh, Kent product called Rusty. It is basically a copper-based grease, and we would just dab places like that. Just put enough on there so that the shoe moves. Okay. All right. So reassembly. Got this guy down. Oh, well, I'm thinking about it. Make sure you spin this guy all the way out. Clean and lubricate these threads. Just spin it all the way out, lubricate it, then spin it back in. And also make sure you lubricate this post where the other side fits. We want all of these guys to be nice and lubricated and freed up. Remember when you're using the grease, a little goes a long way. Don't put a ton on there because if you do, it's going to make a big mess. Now, I, this is a training component, and to keep the, the mess down, 
I'm not going to lubricate all of these parts, but these are all the things that you need to, to do if you're doing your own car. Just pay particular attention. Make sure we don't get any of that grease on the shoe. Okay, If you get it on the friction surface, we're in a world of, world of trouble. Uh, you can see a big nick here. This happened while we were using this at school. Uh, somebody grabbed it um, with a pair of pliers when they shouldn't have and cracked that off. Now, we would have to replace this. This would not pass Virginia State inspection this way, but um, obviously for training purposes, we're gonna continue to use it, okay? But this is one of the things we're looking at when we inspect uh, shoes. When we're not doing a replacement, we're just doing an inspection. We're looking for big cracks and damage like that. Okay, so going back together, put the spring in there. going to put the spring in the back side because it's a whole lot easier to get this spring on um, when it's not okay so there you can see the spring is in there spring is in the other side now I have to get this guy I get that on the right way. yeah okay we're on the correct way. Now I've got to get this guy back in, so I just take and twist it up a little bit, and it drops in. Whoop, came out the other side. That happens sometimes. This is why nobody likes drum brakes. They're real fiddly. They're real pain in the butt to do sometimes. All right. Tell you what, I'm going to do this a different way. Yeah, we're not going to get this on that way. Okay, so we're going to do a reverse order then. What we're going to do, throw our parking brake cable on. to go ahead and mount the shoe to the car. Pull this guy in right there. Use my tool. 90 degrees and we're there. Okay. Do the other side the same way. As you can see, we don't have any rods in place or anything like that. So now, I'm going to drop some parts on the floor. Okay. So, oh, this would be a good time to talk about sequence while we're working on the car. <clears throat> it is never a good idea to take both sides apart at the same time. This side and the other side of the car are mirror image, so you can see what the springs are supposed to be connected to, where, you know, I mean, you got a lot of different places where you can put springs. We want to wait and do one side at a time, so if we need help with that, we can, um, we can actually look at the other side and make sure that we have it correct.
All right, we're hooked in there. I've got my everybody set up properly. So now comes the fun part, squeezing the spring over. All right, so what I do, this guy's in where it's supposed to be. What I do is I grab and squeeze as hard as I can with my one hand, and I use my thumb. See how I'm using my thumb to pull? So I'm just going to grab this, and I can squeeze as hard as I want with the one hand. And that allows me to pull with the other one. And there we go. See how that dropped in? If you just come up here and grab like this and pull, you're gonna have a tough time. Use your thumb. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to just pull that. See, I can still pull it there. It's a lot easier to do that way. Okay, so this guy's in. We're going to drop in our um, adjuster. There we go. There. Okay, see how that hits now? We need a spring for that. This spring is really light. This one's super easy to do, but still, use the same technique. Drop that guy down. Down here, again, it's easiest to just have the shoes up on the top. Hook yourself in, drop one, and then we drop the other, and we're there. All right, so see how that went? Now, we are there, we are reassembled. The only thing we've got left to do Put our hub back on. And see how it sticks if you don't get it perfectly straight? There we go. Right. One nut. Of course, you would tighten this. Now make sure, if you look right there, you can see a notch in the shaft. You will take this, it's called staking a nut. This nut is designed to be bent over. You would take a punch and hit it at an angle like that, right in that little notch, bend it over, that's gonna keep this guy from moving. That's how you lock that one down. Again, training purposes here, we're not going to do that. Put our cap back on. Okay, now our last step is to fit the drum. So I take my bolts out of my drum. Now, I want to line this guy up with my, and there we go. But notice, super free, all right? And that's not what we're looking for. So what we have to do is we have to adjust it. So that's where this tool comes in handy. Now, we'll slide this back a little bit. Put our space out. Let's see what's going on. So this tool, we're just going to back this off, drop it down inside the drum. We're going to find our largest opening. We want to keep it pretty level. Okay, got it right there. All right, so that fits pretty close. All right, so I've locked that down. Now you can look and see what the size is, it really doesn't matter. This is a transfer gauge. So see how free that is? I've got to adjust these out. Otherwise, if we didn't adjust this, we step on the brakes, this guy is gonna to have to expand all that distance. And we're talking, well, we're talking over an eighth of an inch. That's a lot. You transfer that eighth of an inch to the pedal and that will make your pedal drop halfway before the rear brakes are, are doing anything. That is not good, okay? So we need to get these guys adjusted tight. Plus your parking brake won't be adjusted. You pull on it and it's not gonna do a thing for the parking brake either. 
Okay, so we're going to adjust this and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to shine a light in there, see if you guys can see that in there. And I'm just adjusting this wheel. And I know, don't worry about the shoes moving up and down, it's not a big deal. We'll square them back up when we get close. So now I can feel it's getting harder to spin the adjuster wheel because it's actually pulling on that spring now. The first few clicks weren't doing much because it was, uh, it hadn't taken up the slack of the spring yet. All right, so now I'm gonna get these guys squared up. Easy way to square these up, just take your drum and kind of tap them to pull up on the springs and then that will, that will get you square. All right, no, so still no drag. More adjustment. There's a little bit of drag now. We're just going to go another click or two. Not much. You can hear just a little bit of drag. That's what we're looking for, just a little bit of drag. We don't want it to be holding this, and you can see it's still stopping it within a revolution. So that's, that's more than sufficient. Um, but we want to have a little bit of drag on there. Now, when we go out and drive, make sure we apply the brakes, obviously a lot, pull the parking brake a few times, make sure you back up a few times, that will help with the adjuster and it will do its final adjustment. But that's it. That is a drum brake uh, on a Honda. So hope you got something out of it, and we'll see you next time.